Um, hello everyone, and uh, thanks very much for coming to our talk. Um, so we're, we're actually going to be using Prezi, some of you might know this uh, program, this website, you'll get a chance to see it. We're not going to talk about Prezi exactly, but um, you will see a Prezi presentation here. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, my name's Luke Thompson, uh, and I'm a teacher at a school in London called the London School of English, and uh, this is my colleague Andy Johnson, and he is uh, the courses manager at our school in Holland Park. And uh, today we're going to give you a talk on uh, contextual narrative-based learning. I think it might be, the, I think it's the longest title uh, at BC. Um, that's our kind of claim to fame at this time. Um, but uh, so that's that's what we will be talking about. So, so we're maybe we're not selling anything. Don't worry. We're just going to tell you about some material that we've written for one of the courses at our school, and we'll tell you sort of a, the reasons why we wrote the material um, and just the way in which we wrote it, um, and also um, sort of some of the approaches and considerations behind uh, that, that particular material. Okay. Uh, that you, you'll probably have questions and considerations uh, while you're watching this, so there will be a chance for you to ask us those questions uh, at the end. So just hold those thoughts if you have thoughts. Hopefully, you will be actually engaged. <laughs> um, okay, and we should say as well, we're going to show you a lot of things in a very short amount of time, uh, but. We're very happy to email the presentation to you afterwards, and we're also going to put the presentation online as well, so we'll let you know where you can find that. So don't worry if it's going too quickly. You'll be able to see it later. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about the little cloud, and then Luke will tell you about the lightning bolt there. So today's talk, um, it comes from a course that we run at the school called Young Business English. Um, young, the minimum age is 18, Average age is about 26 of the students on the course. It's a group of about 10 students typically. Uh, business, business English, that's why we're all here. That's our special interest. And they tend to be undergraduates or recently graduated. So they're not yet in the workplace, the majority of them. So they, they lack experience. And English, the level of English tends to be intermediate and above. So that's my cloud, and that's your lightning bolt. I do the lightning. You do the lightning. So here's some lightning. So just to tell you a little bit about the students, um, they, as they're kind of fairly <coughs> young, they do have a lot of enthusiasm. They know that English is really important to them, of course, and they're like really keen to get involved. Uh, they don't have very much experience of the world of work, and so as a result, often they they, they don't really know how to apply some of the language that they're, they're, they're using, and they. They, they, unlike some of the older um, uh, students that we have at the school who have lots of experience, these younger learners don't bring so much to the table in terms of experience. So, as a result of that, um, we're not just giving them language that they can just apply uh, to their already existing jobs. Uh, we need to provide them with a lot more support. So, uh, it's not just a need for language, but also um, we need to teach them some soft skills as well. So it's sort of the ways in which they, they use the language too, okay? Um, and so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you might get a little bit seasick in this presentation, but that's, that's fine. So um, the course can... Uh, sometimes we have experienced when teaching this course that it, there can be a sense of a lack of structure in the course because we get like this students in the class, they all want different things, so you're sort of struggling to provide everything that everyone wants. And so the course can come across as a bit bitty, Right, uh, and so we, we don't want to give a bitty piecemeal course. We want to give the the feeling that it's all connected, um, and so we need to sort of provide joined up learning in some way, which can be quite difficult. Um, the challenge is to join it up, but also to make it interesting and engaging, because we know that these young learners they, you know, they've got a slightly shorter attention span, and so you've got to keep them engaged at all times. Um, so. One of the ways that we think we can do this is to provide a, a large context around which, uh, the, you know, in, in which the learning can take place. So there's a thread as well, so that, that means the sort of narrative that runs through uh, lessons. And we're talking here about longer lessons, yeah. so yeah. 
not just a morning, but maybe something that could take place over three or four mornings worth of teaching. Yeah. So, for want of a better name, we've given it this name, which is Contextual Narrative Based Learning. It's basically task-based learning. We don't think that it's anything particularly new. I mean, there's lots of case studies out there, and um, I went to a very interesting talk this morning about something quite similar. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to explain our idea, our concept. We're going to show you one of the example lessons. As Luke said, it takes about 15 hours to complete one of these stories. We've written about six of these now. We're not published. Um, and as we show you the materials, we'll explain the principles behind each part of the story, if you like. And kind of try and explain what's in it for you, really, what the advantages of doing it this way have been for us and our learners. We, we, we write quite a lot of material at the school, mm -hmm. and so um, part of what we want to do is, is to give you an idea of, you know, to make you think about how you can write your own materials as well. So that's another consideration okay. for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, the first idea is that the classroom is a company, so the students within the class work for a company. And through this, they face challenges. The company faces challenges. And the students have to make very real decisions which affect the rest of their course. Um, they learn by doing. And the key thing really for us is that the decisions they make have consequences. When we were both kids, we both used to read, we both used to read these Choose Your Own Adventure books. Is anyone familiar with those? So if you make a decision, then you turn to this page. And I guess we wanted to kind of try and create something similar. It takes a lot of time to write this. We think for every hour of material that we produced, it takes probably two hours to write it. So it takes a lot of work, but it, it is worth it. Um, so, Luke, I think this one's yours. So, um, we'd like to just talk to you about how we created some of the, these pieces of material and you will see some of the material on the screen um, um, in a moment but um, if you're like trying to create a context or something like that where do you start and it can be quite difficult if to, to be creative right so if you enter that creative mode uh, uh, at the beginning you know you've just got a blank piece of paper where do you start you need to come up with some sort of situation maybe a company now we one of the ways that we did this was to actually look at logos and so uh, there are websites, uh, for example this one, um, where you can find lots of royalty free sort of generic logos. Um, and so this is one of the ones we found and we looked at it and we thought, okay, what kind of company might this be? It could be, you know, like a logistics company or something like that, or um, a mail order company perhaps. We ended up deciding that this would be a skills training course that they deliver uh, skills training, right? I mean, it could, be, it could have been any company, that's just what we ended up with. Um, and so we call it Deliver, and that's the company. So from that point, we could have created this whole story just sort of from just the logo, really. Um, so the, in terms of the material, this might be page one, um, and you would, the idea, of course, is just to introduce the topic, um, uh, Deliver being a skills training organisation. It's all about skills training or soft skills. And so the, the first piece of material uh, is just... You know, just a fairly normal lead-in, really, a little discussion on soft skills. Um, you, I, I, you're not going to get a chance to read all of this now, but as Andy said, we can give you the slides later on by email if you want to. If you want us to. Um, then you have, um, for example, a vocabulary um, focus, and this comes from uh, you can see reading there. The reading text is on the next page, and it's an authentic piece of material which was just found on. Business Balls uh, I think it's a website, and so it's again just a vocabulary lead into reading text, um, which is authentic. There we go, and uh, there's there's the text, and so all the vocab here has just been taken out of this authentic text, and it's a good way to just lead into some of the key bits of vocab. You can see it here: different types of skills, some of the key skills, um, so delegation skills, communication skills, and so on. So. Uh, so you've got vocab and reading at the beginning. Um, and then, um, after kind of introducing the, the topic, you would go into the, the context uh, of it. And um, so, 
uh, in this case. <laughs> so it's fairly standard. You introduce the topic, in this case we're reading about soft skills, and then you introduce the context which you have created. So as Luke mentioned, we've created this company called Deliver, which provides training. And there's a little introduction here, which I'll read to you. It says, you are a trainer working for Deliver, a company providing advice and training to small businesses across the UK and Europe. This is a very busy time for your company as you prepare for the upcoming European Jobs and Training Fair in Stockholm, the largest of its kind in Europe. Has anyone heard of the European Jobs and Training Fair? No? No, I made it up. You won't have heard of it. So straight away they have a little idea about the company they work for and what's happening in their company at this moment. So the students become familiar with the context. What follows is an email, and this is written from the CEO of the company, and he is explaining that it's a very busy time and what he would like them to do is three things. The first one is to choose a soft skill from the report they read earlier on. And prepare a short presentation on why it's an important skill for business people to have and then finally run a short workshop training people on this skill. So he's asked them to do three things and he's asked them to reply to his email. So the students then need to reply saying what they are going to do and this kind of dictates the rest of the course, whichever skill they choose. Um, we mentioned the context. Part of that is creating characters which have to be quite engaging and quite interesting. This character is called Rick O'Dell. He's actually a friend of mine. It's a fictitious <laughs> company, but it's a real person. He won't thank me for making him appear such an idiot. But um, Rick likes to use a lot of management speak, lots of buzzwords. So he talks, for example, about um, pushing the envelope and getting our ducks in a row. And the students kind of find this language quite engaging and quite interesting. So immediately they're hooked by it. So you create the context. Um, here we have a language focus. So they need to send him an email and they need to persuade him that their idea is a good one. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we've got some language of persuasion. But we both feel very strongly that with this, this approach to teaching, it's very much down to the teacher how much input they give. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you have a group who have already studied how to write business emails, you probably don't need to do any input on that. At the school we have students continuously enrolling, so every week we have students coming in. So also depending on their level, the teacher can choose to give as much or as little input, language input, as they feel is necessary. So they've got the topic and now they've got the context. The next thing is to vary the delivery. So the students need to write an email to Rick. There's no point asking them to write an email on a piece of paper because when would you do that in real life? So we've set up email accounts. For all the characters we've created, they've all got email accounts. So the students can interact directly with those characters. So here we have Rick's inbox, and the students here have all given their proposals. And you get genuine pieces of writing from them. And then you can use that also, you can go in, you can analyze their writing, you can take it in different directions. This guy here, sorry, sorry, uh, Kim Tae, He's talking about, um, he wants to do strategic planning. That's what he would like to present mm -hmm. at the workshop. He hasn't quite got the idea yet because he's announced himself as the CEO of the London School of English. <laughs> but, you know, you can't ask for everything for the start. Mm -hmm. Sorry, did you want to say something? I was just, yeah, I was going to point out this is, this is exactly what you just said. Okay. That's what I'm Okay, so then we go to the next stage, which is you. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, if, we all know that if you're giving material on paper like this, that you have to try and make it engaging in some way. It should look nice. Um, and so, so it's not really that difficult to do now. Um, with Microsoft Word and things, you can just add in uh, pictures quite easily. Just do a Google image search for something like cartoons on the topic that you're looking for. And you can get some really nice cartoons. For example, this is who, which one's this? Norbert. Dilbert. Dilbert. Norbert Dilbert. You know, Norbert, that's it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's a like a Dilbert cartoon and um, other things like just text boxes, which are really pretty easy to do now, particularly with the latest version of Microsoft uh, Word. Um, and uh, this part of the lesson here 
is just a sort of personalised introduction to uh, presentations. So because we're moving in that direction, in the end they'll be doing something on presentations. We're introducing the idea. Here it's about phobias. You can see lots of different types of phobia. The idea being that uh, they, they discover that the number one phobia is actually the fear of public speaking. Uh, lots of phobia. Right? So it's kind of, um, let's say, it gives them a chance to um, reflect on uh, their experiences of, of doing uh, presentations, which is sort of personalised, let's say. Um, so it then allows them to look at, um, uh, it, it's an introduction to, to doing presentations. Um, um, blended. So um, still moving towards them working on their presentations. Uh, we think it's important to try and vary the way that we deliver the material, or the, the way in which we communicate with the students in class. And uh, um, so, you know, we want to try and replicate the way that these people communicate in the real world. So a lot of them are constantly on their iPhones or hopefully not in class too much. Um, but they obviously use YouTube a lot and things like that. So we want to feel like we're speaking their language. Um, so we try and make blended tasks. And for example, here's a YouTube video which um, we use in this lesson. And it's, it's just um, gives advice on, on making presentations. It may not have sound. I think we don't have sounds, but you get the basic idea. It will probably play now. Possibly. Oh, no. Are we doing a bit of sound? <coughs> from the, um, the animation is fairly straightforward to follow, so the students pretty much get it. Okay, sorry. It's a good, good um, site, that Blink Life, as well, mm -hmm. with loads of those sorts of videos on there. It's got mm -hmm. a good place to find things. Mm -hmm. um, so, whoop. Uh, that could have been slapstick. <laughs> um, so, um, let's see. At the end of this process, the students are going to have to do a task which, if you told them at the beginning of the week they were going to have to do a presentation, they would probably go, ah, or something like that, like, you know, the way they freak out when you tell, ask them to do something like that. Um, so instead of just telling them they're going to do it at the beginning, you kind of lead them towards that um, by providing support, like scaffolding the tasks. Um, so um, in this case, uh, we, we have another email from Rick here with some more uh, idioms in it, um, and slowly as they communicate more with Rick, they realise that they're going to have to do something. And so by the end, what, because they've been sort of supported and prepared for it, by the end when they have to do what actually in this case is a, a workshop, they have to do a training workshop, they're actually so ready, they're keen to do it, because they've been sort of uh, inspired by the conversations that you've been having, and, and, and they feel more and more prepared. So when it comes to the actual task at the end, they're usually up, really up for it. Um, so, <clears throat> here we have an, another email from Rick, as I said, and he's actually saying to them, can you, actually I want you to leave the, the workshop that you uh, said you wanted to do at the beginning of the process. So, um, here is an attachment from Rick, which giving some outline, giving some guidelines on what they should be doing in their, in their training workshop. Um, 
So that they can actually use that to prepare for their own uh, workshops that they will do in the class at the end of the, the, the week. Um, okay. So um, at this point the students realise what the outcome of the week is. Of course you know it from the very beginning of the week as the teacher because you're taking them gently towards it. But when you're writing the materials, it's very important to create the outcome quite early on. So, as Luke mentioned, in this case, it's running a seminar, running a workshop, sorry. So, further materials with a lead into the difference between lectures and seminars and workshops. And then our final piece of correspondence from Rick. They're probably getting really sick of him by this point, <laughs> as you do with your boss. Um, and here, he's, he's asked them to come to work, and he's sent them to one of the meeting rooms, and there's a mystery video that's going to play and he's talking about how he's too busy to be there because he's on the golf course and so on so what they do now is a fun task for want of a better word um is anyone familiar with the website ted yeah, yeah it's fantastic <clears throat> but here we we took something from ted a workshop from ted called the spaghetti challenge no, you heard that one so the students have in groups of four, they've got 20 sticks of spaghetti, not cooked. <laughs> they've got some sellotape, they've got some string, and they've got one marshmallow. And they have 18 minutes to build the highest freestanding tower out of those materials. And the only rule is that the marshmallow has to be on top. Now, they do the task so they can get an example of how to do a workshop. The idea behind the workshop is that it teaches them team building skills, or at least that's what Tom Woodcheck thinks. So once they complete the task, they reflect on it. What did they learn about how they organize themselves? What did they learn about teamwork? And then you can show them the, the, the lecture on TED, and that's Tom basically answers all of these questions. So then they have their own example of how to run their own workshop. And the final point is feedback. We provide feedback forms for all of them. So not only are us as teachers giving them feedback on their language and on their performance, but they also give each other feedback. So they get peer feedback as well. So they get this whole circle of feedback and they go away feeling very well fed back. You know, on a, on a, <laughs> Okay, so we've nearly finished. Uh, we're just going to go over the key considerations, Luke. So, yeah, just in summary, some of the key thoughts and considerations that we have when writing material like this, and we've written a few of these sort of long lessons. Um, first of all, choose a topic that obviously is relevant to their needs and uh, that they will find interesting and motivating and so on. Um, pick an outcome, so that's what, what are they going to do at the end of this fairly long process. Um, for example, uh, to run a uh, training workshop or whatever it might be. Uh, create some characters and context. As you see, people like Rick, the CEO, and uh, um, we've enjoyed making these sort of fairly three-dimensional, and they have their flaws and things, so that they're kind of interesting and maybe a bit ridiculous at, at times, just because then the, you have a laugh with the students in class about the characters, right? Um, and the context as well that goes, goes around the whole thing, for example, our company deliver and so on. Um, you create consequences, so um, they realise that they have to really pay attention and they have to actually take care when they're doing the, each task on the, on the way to the final task because uh, the way that they deal with each one will affect what happens later. For example, um, here if the, the way that they respond to the email at the beginning of the, the process will affect the, the, the way that they have to do the task at the end. Um, so it's, they have a kind of uh, real sense that what they do has, has an, an effect, like, like in the real world. Um, so also you have to make it flexible, this is really important for the teacher, because obviously uh, as a teacher you might not want to uh, go in and be fixed into 15 hours worth of lesson materials. So you have to design the materials so that uh, you, um, so that teachers can uh, maybe take a, each bit as a standalone bit which they can teach on its own, rather than having to teach the whole thing. So you have to build in a sort of flexibility so that each part, each segment, could be used on its own if, if necessary. Thing, you know, we, we prefer the teachers to do the whole thing, because we wrote it that way, but it is designed that they can just pick and choose bits yeah. as they like. 
um, and also uh, make it blended. So that means evolving, as mentioned, various things now. When writing this material, the first port of call, of course, was Google, and just a Google search can just start you off on a little sort of flight of inspiration. Um, and also, obviously, TED, uh, which is a great resource for videos and it can, again, be a good source of inspiration. Um, and uh, Sporkle, I don't know if you've mm -hmm. played around with it, but it has uh, lots of language games, and they're really mm -hmm. effective. Uh, and they're, they're really good for, for warm-up activities, for example. Like this one that Andy uses a lot, which is they have, to, they have lots of logos of very famous brands, but all the names have been taken out. And they have five minutes to try and name all the brands. And then immediately they're just locked into the... The, the, the topic of branding, for example, so it's really fun as well. Um, and uh, Prezi, uh, and this presentation that you're seeing here was was done was made using Prezi, uh, which you can get on your iPad as well as an application for free. And it's a it's quite a different way of presenting information rather than just the standard linear sort of slide, next slide, next slide approach that you get with PowerPoint. <coughs> Instead, with this, you get slightly more. Not that there's anything wrong with PowerPoint. Not that there's anything wrong with PowerPoint, of course. It's just a nice alternative sometimes. Um. Okay, so some comments. We've, um, we've been doing this now for about six months. Um, here's just a selection of comments from one group that we had. So, I like the special expressions. That's, he's talking about the idiomatic language. Um, that was nice, Maria. You have a picture in your mind of the people. So it's all about creating memorable characters with flaws. That's nice from a Russian. Um, it's good to apply our skills to real life situations, Jose. And yeah, it's surprising. You never really knew what would happen next. And then finally, this is from one of our teachers. They're learning about the world of work as well as the language used within it. Claudia's only, Claudia had a slight feeling of guilt, particularly re referring to what Tay Young said, because she felt that she was kind of lying to the students throughout the week. They didn't really know where it was going, and she did, and she couldn't really tell them otherwise. Okay, so it's generally pretty positive. So, thank you for listening. Any questions? We've got probably about five minutes if you want to ask us questions. We'll be hanging around as well during the coffee break. You can ask us questions yet. Then. Any thoughts or comments? I mean, welcome any ideas or comments on this. Do you, do you provide any feedback on the written email? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the way through, it's, we're constantly giving them feedback. So the written email that they get, yeah, they they would get a feed, written feedback on that. Yeah. It's, it's vital. Yeah, and depending on the level of the writing, that could yeah. be a whole session yeah. in itself. So it's get it gets back to the point about flexibility. It's up to the teacher how much time mm -hmm. they spend on each section. So you can. Individual, mostly individual feedback, or, uh, or um, it depends. It's entirely down to the teacher. Yeah, I think it's probably be a mix of the two. Mm -hmm. They'd give a little bit of return email feedback, mm -hmm. and also when I teach it, I like to do group feedback as well, using examples. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, we were kind of talking about this in the last session about authentic materials. Mm -hmm. um, what about copyright? Do you have any issues with that? Because you did mention uh, a few websites mm -hmm. with royalty-free well, uh, images. We try to be careful. I mean, we always credit sources whenever we do use any material. Um, what happens, the, the, what we've been showing you here, let me just flip back a few slides. A bit quicker. So, for example, if you look at these, these are all Word documents, and I've just created PDFs. Mm -hmm. But at the bottom, there's always a, a line saying where all the pieces of material came from. Now, I don't, because we're not published, we don't know yeah. what would happen if we were to get anything published. That may change things. We don't really know too much about that at the moment. But we haven't had any issues. I think, I think if you're selling the material, that's a different thing. But if you're just using it um, as part of a course, that's a, I think it's a different question. I'm just wondering if we'd be could apply this sort of idea and then the, we should copy to other fields. I mean, for example, I teach, I've been teaching bar, barmen for a long time. They could set up so, and I'm often working in a bar and create, I'm imagining this company 
this is what I tend to do. Yeah. But you can imagine so. what would be perfect would be able to like sit on the shoulder of the learner mm -hmm. yeah. while they're going through their actual job and yeah. sort of help them through it. But you can't do that for yeah. obvious reasons. But mm -hmm. so the more you can set it up so it's like more that. Like the company, the, yes, the, which the, I do, you know, usually I mean do practical stuff, but set it up as a company. See if it yeah. Me, yeah. Yeah, because then you can go through the whole sort of process mm -hmm. of setting up a company and mm -hmm. that's more legal the English though, isn't it? Um, this goes back to feedback and also to assessment. Do you have any criteria that you set down? Is this a compulsory course that they're taking? Um, can you say something about that? Because assessment is a huge issue somehow well, at yeah. university. Because we, we're a private language school, so we aren't tied into any necessary assessment. We, I mean, we write reports on the students at the end of the course, and we give them, we assess their level, their spoken level. We also have, um, we use, I think it's Oxford online testing, so they do progress tests, but it's not part of this course. This isn't an academic English course either. I mean, they might be, they might sort of take sort of some months off their university course to come, but it's not integrated within their university studies, this, this course. It's a, just a business English course for people at, at university graduate or postgraduate age. So motivation is not an issue for so, example. So, well, assessment can be just done on, our, on, on your own terms. Right. Mm -hmm. But, it, I mean, some of the most important things are just task achievement. Mm -hmm. Like, Taehyung, as you saw, thought he was the CEO of London School of English, but that was not part of, that wasn't in the criteria for that particular task. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, you've got to come yeah. up with it. And that may be due to instruction or something. But, but, but the, the question of motivation is, is a good one because one of the problems that we had on the course was that the students weren't really engaging mm -hmm. and we had to think of a way to get them more involved because we don't have assessment. Mm -hmm. So by putting them in a team, they kind of feel that they owe something to their teammates to do the tasks properly. So we find that it does, it does work well. You, you mentioned at some point in the preparation, you said for one hour you do two hours of work on it. That mm. seems to me, looking at what you've done, as if that's working very fast. I would imagine mm. that because you, all the documents look very professional and everything. Surely to produce one hour student work, you do a hell of a lot more than two hours um, up front. No, once you start it, actually, it, it kind of writes itself. Um, We've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, we've now, oh, okay. like this, <laughs> that was like the first material yeah. we ever created, so we've been writing for material for a while, so to kind of get used to the mindset of doing it, and eventually you just get the idea, and immediately you just sort of set it all down. Mm -hmm. But at the, at the early stage, if, you, if, you've, if you're not used to writing material, it can be very hard and very time consuming. Mm -hmm. But the more you do it, the quicker it is, until now you can come down in the break and just bang out the piece of material and print it and take it into class with you. Because you've got a kind of template, you've got some things that are ready to go, you enter them. You yeah, know. that's, yeah. that's the company thing. So the, we, we use the company templates, but the rest yeah. is just basically the header and the footer is already set up to go. Yeah. But um, we're quite fortunate where we work because we, we are allotted quite a lot of time to write material. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. and the more you do, the more you get asked to do it. And we both mm -hmm. love doing it. It's good that the school invests in it. Mm -hmm. Excellent, actually. And how, how do you see the students' progression? How, can, how do you determine, how do you see, how are the students progressing I mean, with, with the material that you have? And well, do you see... You have tutorials, you do have tutorials, we regularly have tutorials with them. Oh, okay. And also, they take tests as well, which okay. are like the yeah. Oxford Online oh, okay. test, um, which gives them a sort of overall sense of their, their learning. Yeah. Uh, but you can give them even just a review at the end of the week to give them a sense of, for example, how much vocabulary they picked up. But if you just work, we work quite closely with them, and we like to meet them quite regularly for tutorials, and that's an important way of just sort of gauging their, their improvement. And, and yeah. Okay, great. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's now three o'clock, so I think that's the end.